Coming up on the FRC Open Alliance Show, 4481 Team Rembrandt is back there. The Hopper winners from last year coming in from the Netherlands. They have some amazing things to showcase for their progress in the briefscape season. We'll talk about strategy, their data-driven decision-making, a lot of prototypes you've got to check out, and some of the progress and what they've learned from these prototypes as well, too. They're taking an interesting decision of actually foregoing LG right now. We'll talk about that decision for that, too. Check out their kit bot that they created. They're showcasing their cycles, what they learned from that, and how it's making a different decision for their archetype as well, too. So let's learn more about 4481 and their progress coming up here on the FRC Open Alliance Show. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. And we welcome you back on the Open Alliance Show 4481 Team Rembrandt coming in from the Netherlands. Hopper winners last year, actually with another Open Alliance team, 63-28 mechanical event. So congratulations on a phenomenal season that you had last year as well, too. Uh, competing week one and week two out in California again, so we can't wait to see everything that's going on with your team. Hey, y'all, why don't you introduce yourselves? Let us know what you do in the team. We're going to be jumping right into all the great stuff you have going on. Yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, I'm Yannicke. I'm a part of the electronics team uh, in this team. I'm Kai, so I'm part of the 3DN team. I'm yours. I'm part of the hardware team. So let's jump right into what you've been working on. You've mentioned 3DM on that. I'd love to hear more about some of your strategy and how you're approaching it. Yeah, so during the kickoff, we dove straight into the 3DM. Uh, we looked at the analysis and uh, mostly the skills list. Uh, here we decided what, to, uh, what we want to do. We decided on doing L1 to 4 Coral and no LG scoring. So uh, we have a deep climb to m make sure we can reach all the RP. Well, I want to ask you about that. You know, you're, so you're not going to go with any LG scoring at all this season currently. Is that correct? Yes, we are not focusing on it. It might become a part of a robot later on if it fits within the archetype, but we are not focused on it. Okay. So can you dive a little bit more into, like, on your decision making, why did you feel that maybe LG wasn't the appropriate way for your team to go? Uh, we wanted to reduce complexity, and we noticed that as soon as we add LG, you have to handle two different game pieces, which could add a lot of trouble within your robot. You have to add multiple subsystems to, for it. So that's why we decided on just being a simple robot that could score all the coral and still be a high-scoring robot. Uh, so for our 70% rule, uh, we decided on building the robot with only the coral. We looked at our probable cycle times together with uh, what we needed to win a competition. Uh, for California, that's around the 70% mark of the total OPR of a world's winning robot. So that's why we decided on a 70% robot uh, with only Coral as LG wasn't needed to get the OPR score. So you're competing weeks one and week two in California, right? I, I think that automatically kind of notches up some of those requirements a little bit because you have such tough competition out there. Uh, so really cool to just see how you're analyzing and breaking all that down. Let's jump into some prototypes you've been working on. I'd love to see some of them. Yes. Uh, we're working on the internal gripper with funnel, as you can see right here. It has uh, the two-inch wheels, uh, and it... Uh, yeah, we'll showcase it real quick. Yeah, and it catches the coral, and uh, uh, since the, the two-inch wheels add some pressure to the sides, uh, the coral won't come off. Uh, yeah, we yeah. tested a little bit. We had a shorter version, uh, which didn't have much grip, but we extended it, and now it seems to work uh, pretty good. But it has, uh, you can't get the algae out of the reef because the wheels are internal. Uh, uh, but we'll look at, on that later on. Another thing that we added to this subsystem is uh, is the funnel because, uh, as you maybe can see, the, the gripper itself is quite um, uh, small. 
So to make it easier to align at uh, the coral station, we added some funneling uh, with the hope that it will be easier to, uh, to align during a match. Yes, and we also have the um, spring-loaded ripper. Um, it's now only doing algae, but um, we are looking into uh, also getting coral with it. But uh, the system works, uh, is uh, yeah, it is based on on I think what the engineers posted a few days ago, and uh, it was interesting for us to try out. So uh, we made a wooden prototype, uh, and we're currently testing it. Furthermore, we also looked into some deep climbing. Uh, we can't show it on screen right now because um, we don't have the vis videos of them, but I think you have them. So we tried multiple tests, one where we clamped the bar with using two rods and one where we had an internal hook that would uh, attach itself to the top plate of the um, cage. And for your team, uh, timing-wise on all this, what what does kind of like your mat cycles look like? You know, is there a certain amount of time you want to reserve for doing a deep cage climb? Is it something that you just want to do if there is enough time? How does that all break down for your team? Uh, for now, looking at the RP, we reserved around 15 seconds uh, at the end of the match for a climb, as it's quite a difficult climb this year, so we can't do it in three seconds like last year. Uh, however, we will look into... If we need a deep climb or can score coral uh, when needed to win a match instead of just getting, going for the one large RP. So on the video that we showed uh, with your test, uh, we saw some a couple different grip materials used for grabbing onto that cage. Have you done any other tests at all that maybe were on your Open Alliance blog or anything like that? Um, yeah, we tested uh, it without any grip, uh, but it had too much slack in it, so it couldn't hold on uh, and it fell off. So then uh, we added the uh, little grip and it didn't make it uh, hard to align. So we'll have to look into that later on. But um, for the climbing, it worked perfectly uh, for now. All right. So we have this awesome robot uh, down by you, the, the Hank robot, right? And I'd uh, love to hear more about uh, what you're utilizing from the kit bot on here and uh, some of your decision making behind everything and what you've discovered from it. Okay, so we decided to build uh, a kitbot this year to uh, start driving practice as early as possible. Uh, since we had the resources to build this one and uh, we also had a running uh, drivetrain, so it was uh, an easy decision to make it. And um, yeah, what I said, we want to utilize the driving practice, but also we want to uh, test how long it will take to drive cycles. And uh, as the, the video that is shown on screen, we uh, yeah, validated the results that we calculated with 3DM. So in a video, you can see that we are uh, able to do uh, 21 uh, cycles with this kit bot. So uh, those are really promising results for the rest of the season. Uh, yeah, and that, that's what we build it for, actually. Were you able to fit 21 coral uh, actually on the reef here, like on level one? Well, well uh, the, a lot fell off. And I think that 21 won't be able to fit if you don't organize it well. Uh, so th there are also some insights that we learned from, uh, from using this kit bot. Uh, yeah, so that. Yeah, and, and mention this is there's no vision on this or anything like this. It's just pure driver skill that's happening for this. So you know, for for your team as you're looking back and you're uh, analyzing the game on here, how many cycles do you think that you're going to be able to accomplish, or what are you hoping for when you build your actual robot? Yeah, I uh, I think uh, Gijs can answer that. Um, for our hundred percent robot, which we want to achieve if possible. I think we were at around 23 cycles during a match with an extra three to four in auto. And uh, for our 70%, we're a little bit below that, still at four piece auto, but we're looking into 18 cycles. So learning what you had off of the kit bot on here, um, I know that you have some uh, archetype decisions that have been made off of that. So where, where has that led you into? Where are you getting at so far in terms of uh, uh, continuing the uh, evolution of your robot? Yeah, we made the archetype decision because it was very simple uh, design um, and also to uh, have maximum uh, area for improvement. So, um, yeah, we can just change the grippers out. We can test everything, um, how it works. And um, if it doesn't work, we just change it. So it's, it's very simple. And we're also starting very early uh, this year with the building. 
Yeah, as, uh, as George said, we, we came up with some different archetypes and uh, we actually chose archetype uh, number four because it's really easy to change the, the grippers and other subsystems. So we're still uh, trying some uh, different climbs, uh, for example. Uh, the Robonauts came out with a new climb that seems really promising, so uh, we want to try uh, that uh, combined with uh, what we already have. So uh, that's why we chose uh, this archetype to, to iterate a bit more uh, before regionals and uh, get the best out of the robot as we can in uh, six weeks. And the other reason we chose this archetype was mostly focused on the simplicity with the amount of degrees of freedom. We only have a single stage, so um, only one linear extension, and then with a pivot, instead of using two linear extensions. Uh, and this should help the hardware team to be faster with the iteration process. You mentioned that your team is playing week one and week two, plus you have international travel to do, you know, all that stuff. The robot's got to be crated and shipped up. From your, uh, do you set essentially like milestones or deadlines that you want to hit as a team? Or is it like, hey, we're just going to get as much done as possible by the time we have to leave? What does some of maybe the, the future like three, four, five weeks look like for uh, Team Rembrandt's? The, the goal that we mainly have is to have the first uh, alpha robot running uh, around the end of week three. So that's the main goal that we have. And further, we can iterate on that uh, robot to make sure that it's up and running. And uh, to ship it to, to the United States, we uh, put the robot in our suitcases. So the deadline for us to finish it is, is really when we leave. So that, that's, uh, yeah, that's really helpful to, to ship it in our, in our suitcases. Yeah, it gives you a little bit more time, right? So that's, yeah. that's really yeah, interesting. Sure, I'm sure yeah. packaging a robot in a suitcase is a story in itself as well, too, and how to get all that uh, shipped over as well. So, yeah. uh, But, hey, yeah. Team Rembrandt, we're going to have you back on here in just a few short weeks, so we can't wait to see your progress. But you make sure you are following their progress on Chief Delphi, on their build blog as well, too. There's so many great things on there and a lot of great resources that teams can learn from. So, Team Rembrandt, thank you so much for taking the time. Really appreciate everything we can learn from this, and we wish you best of luck. We'll see you uh, in just a couple of weeks. Yeah, thank you a lot. Thanks for having us. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions.